Hello, hello everyone. Sarah with the change with him and my dog. <laughs> One second. Okay. The very real thing when the Amazon man comes. <laughs> Anyways, today's episode is about manipulation and the power of manipulation. Manipulation has has a lot of power and it's quite, it's quite messed up. It's quite fucked up when we experience it. And I think a lot of us, me personally, and me included, we beat ourselves up when we experience manipulation. It's really, it's really hard. It's really challenging and it's really hard and it's really challenging because in the processing of being manipulated, we understand what took place. And if you don't, if you're still questioning that or wondering what took place or how to know what took place, I hope you find insight, awareness, realization, connection in this episode. Uh, I truly believe in divine timing, perfect timing. And the beauty of that is it's not our timing. It's not ours. We can't, we can't take full credit for it. We can be aware that we were there. And there were choices made that got us there, that took us there, but we're not the almighty, powerful one, right? We're, we're not the one. And I think a lot of us live in that wanting to be the one because we're wanting to be the one who avoids being controlled or manipulated or put into uncomfortable situations. But uncomfortable situations have the potential, the power, and the ability to expand us and to grow us and, and to transform us and to shape us into becoming who he wants us to be and who we want us to be. But if we, if we have an expectation that it ends on a certain day, we're going to be left disappointed. We're going to left be left feeling manipulated. And there's so much power in manipulation. And the truth about manipulation is that we realize that we gave our power away, that we gave our we gave this power to someone else. We we saw that person as having what we perceived to be lacking. And we put them on a pedestal. This one who had more than us, who had more authority, more, more knowledge, more wisdom, more of whatever it is that we perceive that we lack. And in that, you can get into an energy and frequency of manipulation. And it's really the position of power that we have placed someone else in. And through the processing of the regret, the hurt, the shame, the pain, the guilt of all of that, all of that that we label manipulation, we, we can take a stance because we always have a choice. We can take a stance where we say, things from a hurt place, like they took advantage of me, they did this, they did that, that victim stance, that that things were done to me and not for me. And in that, we're continuing to give them power. We're continuing to allow the manipulation to take from us what we went to them for because we perceived we didn't have it in ourselves. So manipulation is always a power stance and it's always, they have what I... I'm telling myself, feeling that I don't, believing that I don't, but our feelings are not facts. And a lot of us follow our feelings as if they are. We follow our feelings of hurt and pain and shame and guilt and blame. And, and those are low vibrational, low frequency energies and feelings. And they're also very manipulative feelings. They're ones that when are, are present and we say, okay, well, I'm going to go to this person. I'm going to stay with this person. I'm going to look to this person. I'm going to invest in this person whatever resource it is that we're investing in that person, time, money, energy, right? All the things that we really can't measure. Or if we do, you know, I gave, I spent too much time with them. I didn't spend enough time with them. And, and there was always this what's in it for me experience. What's in it for me is that I want, because I desire to have what it seems that they have and I don't. So do you feel the energy of that? They're more abundant in this and I, I'm more in lack of this. Uh, that's manipulation. And the processing of this, we realize the manipulation is through the lens of our own perception. And that really can fuck a lot of people up. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm included in that lot of people group. 
because we process this and we realize this and then we think, fuck, I'm fucked up. Like that was me. I made that choice. I put that person on a pedestal. I gave them my time. I gave them my energy. I gave them my attention. I gave them. So in that, I gave my power away. In that, it actually wasn't manipulation. It was me believing that I'm not enough. It was me not seeing the goodness, not seeing the greatness within myself, not seeing what God sees in me. And that's like everything has changed with him. When I start to experience this, I realized he doesn't see those things in me because when he looks at me, he sees who he created. He sees who he loved and still loves and always has and always will. And if we're still breathing, we still have a pulse. We still have a purpose. He still has a plan for us. And so in that, we can still have a hope for us. And we can extract the lessons of manipulation and take them to him with open palms and say, oh, this is what I got. It's not much because I just went through this experience where I feel so manipulated and I feel so hurt and I feel helpless and I feel like I can't take this and I feel like I can't go on anymore. I need you. And when we sit with that, we realize that's all he wants. That's all God wants is for us to go to him, to have an open, vulnerable relationship with him. Because a relationship with God is not a relationship of manipulation. It's just not. And what he did for us, in the way that he died for us, he was so manipulated and so hurt. When you read through the Bible, it talks about this. And when you've experienced it yourself and the pain from it, you can only imagine the taking on the pain of everyone who's been manipulated is far more painful than anything that we've ever experienced, any pain that we've ever been through. is far more cutting like that that cut to the soul when you feel like fuck I've been manipulated when you when you put yourself in his position I know there's worship songs that say I can only imagine I like literally every worship song brings tears to my eyes (laughs) I think it's mercy me and they say I can only imagine and like when the chorus drops I'm like God, I can only imagine because when you've been in an experience of manipulation and you beat yourself up, you are harder on yourself than anyone else could ever be on you. And you realize through the manipulation, it was you. It was you that was allowed the opportunity to experience the lesson. And I believe We're allowed to experience those things so that we can just get a little glimpse, a little tiny awareness and insight to how much he loves us, to how much he's done for us, and that he truly, 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 truly understands our pain more than we could ever know what it's like to understand. He understands And that's why I just, it's so important to read the word because as you read it, things jump out to you. I was reading this morning in Mark about Jesus's crucifixion. And it says to be careful of envy. There was a lot of envy from the religious leaders, from the Pharisees. And and the very the religious leaders are the ones that put Jesus to death because he said he's the king of kings, because he said he's the great I am, that he is a king with a difference. And they didn't like being in a position where their perceived power was going to be diminished or taken away from them or shrunk. And that's what happens when we experience manipulation. It's a power battle. One person has it, the other person doesn't. 
And that's what it feels like. And we don't like it when it feels like it's getting taken away. And so we we strive to keep it, to hold on to it. And Jesus relinquished. He let go. He surrendered. He didn't beat them back when they were beating him. He could have. He could have ended it all right there. But he didn't. He allowed himself to go through the pain and the suffering to show us his creation that he understands our pain and our suffering. He understands the manipulation. He understands how bad it hurts to be lied to, to be tortured, tortured emotionally, tortured mentally, and in his case, tortured physically. He gets it. He gets us. And he understands the power struggle that has always existed and the labels that we attach to it when we call it manipulation. And we beat ourselves up because we realize, fuck, I was the one that gave my power away. And in that, it caused pain. Because we're giving it away to someone who doesn't appreciate it. And everything you give to God, he appreciates. He honors. He glorifies He redeems, he restores, he heals. But so often we're afraid to give it to him. We're afraid to go to him because of the very thing we've experienced. But that's what repentance is all about. It's not about hiding in your shame and staying in the pain from manipulation and wanting to hold on to what tiny little piece of power you have left that you realize, fuck this, this ends here. I'm not giving my power away anymore. Fuck you, asshole. Like we can say all those things and we can say all the stories. And when we give to him what we've given to others and when we trust him with it, he does incredible, wonderful, amazing things with it. He's not a God of manipulation. He's not a God of control. He doesn't need your power. (laughs) I think about all the power he has and, and what he could do if he was truly a God of revenge. All the people who beat him who tortured him. He was kind to them. He was respectful to them. All he stated was who he was. I am who you say I am. Because they were asking him, who are you? You're the God? And he's like, I am who you say I am. I accept the title King of the Jews. That was written on the cross. He accepted it because it's truth. He accepts truth. And when we take our truth to him, when we've experienced manipulation, when we take our truth and we say, I gave my power away and I gave my power away to someone because I was afraid. I thought that they had more than I had and, and there was envy involved in that. There was jealousy and envy in that I wanted what they had. I perceived them to be more powerful than me and, and I we feel that feeling inside because we gave it to the wrong person. We realized we gave it to someone when we were putting in a position of power. Instead of going to Jesus first with it, we went to someone else with it. And we put all of it in their hands. There's only one God. And Jesus isn't walking this earth anymore. He will again someday, but he's not today in this very moment. Not that I'm aware of anyway. (laughs) I didn't come back yet, but he's coming soon. And that's what I was reading this morning. It says, be careful of envy. It is sometimes described as the religious sin. But Jesus came to free us from religion. And in that, envy is sometimes described as the religious sin. Obviously, the Bible talks a ton about different sins and the consequence of sin, but we have free will. We have the ability to choose. We have the ability to do what we want to do. And he's not going to like swoop down and grab us and and move us and stop us. But there is a consequence to that. There is an experience with it. And it doesn't matter how many times you sin, but a lot of us do that. We give our power away and we get into experiences and struggle with manipulation because of envy, because of perception that another person has something that we perceive that we lack. 
And so we're putting our resources, investing our resources into that and expecting this outcome and outpour of abundance that will somehow like move higher up the ladder or up the scale than the person that we invested in. And it becomes this power dynamic in play. And if you read the Bible, the Bible says to be careful of envy. Envy is described as religious sin. And Jesus came to free us from religion. Religion is about rules and, and power play. Jesus is not about any of that. He warns us against that. Be careful of that. Cuidado, be careful. Like the little orange or yellow cone that you see when you go to a restaurant bathroom. It's in English and Spanish. It's like it's trying to get through to you multiple ways. Be careful. Cuidado. There's even a picture for those who can't read good. <laughs> little picture of like a little guy falling and slipping and maybe like a little lightning zap. Like, ah, you're going to bonk your head. It's not going to feel good. Be careful. Like there are signs and wonders. There are warning signs against this. A lot of times we miss them. He's like, be careful of envy. And when we experience envy, we also experience manipulation. And envy, be careful of, is sometimes described as religious sin. We know there's consequences to sin. We fucking feel it emotionally, mentally. We're like, fuck, why? Why do I feel so fucked up right now? Why does this hurt so bad? Why do I feel like I'm like on a roller coaster of highs and lows and I can't function and like this has just consumed me, my day, my thoughts, my relationships are impacted by it. I'm not there. I'm not present. I'm, I'm projecting my own internal pain on those that I love the most. What the fuck is going on? It's because of this. This realization, this internalization that we have given our power away because we don't believe that we have it. Someone else does. Really the only person who has everything that we desire, which is just love, true acceptance, true connection, like soul love, soul connection. That relationship, that one that can heal us, restore us, redeem us is the relationship with God. And we experience that that religious sin, the envy that we were warned against when we experience manipulation. We put the power in someone else's hands because we thought they had it and we didn't. And it goes on to describe Jesus is a subject to insults and false accusation. And the thing is, we can experience insults from others when others manipulate us, right? They can go and they can say things that aren't true. And Jesus is like, oh, I get it. Been there too. Raise my hand. Like, raise your hand if you've ever experienced this. He's like the first one with his hand in the air. Yeah. Have you read my, my, my biography, my life story? <laughs> Have you read what other people said about me? I get it. The Me Too movement. He's not this like the crazy almighty God that's like, I don't get you because I'm so far above you, bigger than you, greater than you. That's why he manifested himself in physical human form and came and lived life on this earth so that he could with full integrity, full honesty, looking into your eyes and peering into your soul and your soul knows he gets it. He can truthfully say me too. I understand what it's like to be manipulated. But when you also look at his life, the only person he gave his power to was his father, was God. That's the only person he gave his power to. And through that, and in and through the person of Jesus and who he was, and the role model that he is for us, that entire time he was teaching us, he was warning us, he was throwing out caution signs. Hey, wake the fuck up. Like, don't give your power to the Pharisees or the religious leaders. You do, you're going to be manipulated. You do, they're going to be envious of you. And envy is a religious sin. Look what the fuck they're going to do to you. Look what they did to me when they were envious of me. And all I did was speak the truth. I claim to be the king of the Jews because that's the truth. I am. And look at what they did to me when they were envious. Fucking murdered me. Like, horribly murdered. They beat him. They hung him. They left him to die. 
And then when you look at <laughs> the resurrection, he's like, even in all of that, even through all your envy, even through all that manipulation, the pain, like you were telling others that the, what I was speaking as the truth wasn't the truth. You were manipulating other people because you were envious of me because I didn't come in ruin. I came in in a dirty manger, I came in on a donkey, like I came in and I hung out with sinners. I hung out with people who needed restoring and redemption and love. People who thought they were too far gone. I came in, I, I partied with the lost. I partied with people that you hate and you looked down on me. And they knew that I was who I said I am because I am. They were not envious of me. You look at Jesus, all he had to say to people who got it was follow me. Like Matthew, like Peter, they dropped, literally dropped what they were doing when he looked at them and said, follow me. They're like, why am I following you? Wait, hold on. Let me see what you have. Let me see what's in it for me. Let me see what I can get for you. No, Jesus said, follow me. And they did. And he didn't, he didn't come in with a bunch of gold and swagger on, jewels, emblems. Like it, He was plain. He was unattractive. Normal dude. <laughs> How does someone who looks so plain, unattractive, and literally like has nothing to their name physically, he didn't have a big mansion, and a bunch of girls out front, like, <laughs> must have been something much, much bigger, much, much better, and much, much greater. But there are people who were envious of that, people who wanted some of that. If you're slandered or bad mouth, be thankful that God allows you in a tiny way to enter into the sufferings of Jesus and pray that God will help you respond as he did with love, with forgiveness, with compassion. And that's not just for the people who manipulated you. That's for the ways that you have manipulated you. That's for the ways that you have hurt you. That's for the ways that you have beat yourself up so bad emotionally, mentally, physically, maybe not physically, I hope not physically, mentally, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. More than that other person or other persons ever could have. You get a tiny little gl glimpse into it, a moment in time where you enter into the sufferings of Jesus. And in those moments where you're beating yourself up because you realize and you're extracting the lessons from this experience of manipulation, I gave my power away to the wrong person, to someone, but it was never the wrong person. If you actually sit with that, it was the right person for you to have that experience with so you could have the experience of love and forgiveness. It was the right person who hurt you. And there was a part of you deep down internally and unconsciously that needed that, that experience, that allowed that experience so you could allow in this experience with Jesus this experience with God so that you could be thankful that he allowed you, even if it's just in a tiny way, because it's hard to see this when you're in the pain. I get that. That little tiny glimpse into what it might've been like to be Jesus as he experienced suffering. And as he did go to his father, go to God and pray. Pray to be like Jesus. Pray the Jesus way. <laughs> Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And it's like a door that gets cracked open when you pray. Because he's not going to barge in. He's not manipulative. He's not cunning. He's not conniving. He's not controlling. He allowed you to experience that experience so you could extract the lessons from it. Come to him, the one who heals, redeems, and restores. 
so that you could experience what it was like to be Jesus and pray that God helps you respond the way that Jesus did with love, with forgiveness. Literally while he's dying on the cross after he had just been beaten. I don't know if you've seen the passion of Christ. It's not pretty. It is not pretty. A lot of blood. A lot of physical wounds. We don't have to have that to receive the love and the forgiveness, the compassion, the acceptance, the healing and the redemption that we desire. And we only have God to thank for that. And he wrapped himself up in a skin suit, in a meat suit. (laughs) He came to live life as Jesus so that we always, always, always have that available to us. Every moment of every day, it's there, it's available. And prayer lets it in. Prayer opens the door to saying, I need you, come into my life. I've experienced manipulation and through the experience of manipulation, there's a realization I gave my power away and I gave it to someone who exchanged it for this experience so that I could exchange it for the experience with you. Will you help me? Will you help me to experience love, forgiveness, kindness, compassion towards that other person and more importantly, towards myself? God, you sent your son Jesus to live a perfect life because no matter how fucking hard I try, I will always fail. I live as a human on this earth. I experience envy. And even though you warned me, like the little bathroom sign, oh, don't slip. Multiple ways, multiple languages. You even put a little picture on there in case I couldn't read the words. Be careful of envy. That's the religious sin. And I realized I am living in this. I need you. And I know you came to save me from religion and all you want, all you desire, and all that I desire from being fully truthful and in full integrity and honesty with myself is not more laws and rules. It is not more pain. It's a relationship of love, a relationship of compassion, kindness, forgiveness, and acceptance. And I know you want that for me too, but without that relationship with you, I won't have a relationship with true love, with real love. I won't have a relationship with forgiveness. I won't have a relationship with kindness, with acceptance, with compassion. It is in and through our relationship with Jesus, not just God, creator, universe, source, that we get to have a relationship with the things that we truly desire, not one with manipulation, but with one of freedom from it. I love you guys. I'm praying for you with my whole heart. And I I just hope this, I really truly hope that this finds you where you are today and brings comfort. There's a, I I can only bring so much comfort. Comfort doesn't come from me. (laughs) I'm not a lazy boy. Just kidding. I'm not Jesus. Um, I truly hope that this finds you where you are. And I hope that if it really touched you, um, that you would share it with someone who maybe needs to hear this. Uh, I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Before we go, if you haven't yet, I invite you to invite him into your life. Big man upstairs, JC, (laughs) the one who loves us and doesn't care how many times we've given our power away to someone else, how many times we've experienced the pain of manipulation. He is here to redeem, restore, and heal us from that. And when we open up ourselves to a relationship with him, it's available much faster, much quicker. We don't need to hold it. It's not ours to carry. And he's happy to take that off your shoulders. In fact, he already has. You just need to let him in. Thank him for that. What he's already done. It is finished. He is risen. It's already done. All that pain from all that manipulation is not yours to carry. So will you allow yourself to be free from it today? by letting him into your heart and into your life and just saying, Jesus Christ, come into my life. The door is open. Thank you for the signs. Please come in. I love you, friend, and I'll see you next time.